Hey everybody, I am Kenya and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today is Palm Sunday. So happy Palm Sunday to everyone who celebrates. Um, if you went to church today, I hope that your church service was a good one, okay? If you don't know from a couple of videos prior, I did go to Cartagena, Colombia for my birthday trip. I had a blast. However, I have about 10 tips for solo travelers if you plan to go to Cartagena, Colombia. Now, I'm only speaking about Cartagena because that's the city I went to. So I have my notebook. So if you see me looking down at my notes, I made sure to write down everything so I can give you all the tips and all the tea, okay? So first things first, before you go to Cartagena, you need to fill out an online migration form, okay? Now, I would recommend that you wait until whatever airline you are flying with, like I flew with JetBlue. So about three days before the trip, they sent me an email like, hey girl, hey, you gotta fill out this migration form and then fill it out. Versus I heard about the migration form, I went online, I filled out a migration form, but it was like a private company and they charged me $94, okay? The migration form is free, okay? free and so as soon as I realized my error because obviously JetBlue emailed me and I realized there was no fee I went back to the other website and basically swiftly and expeditiously requested a refund and they did give me a refund in like two days which I'm so grateful for it was for $94 so do not do what I do the migration form is free and make sure you fill it out before you get to the airport because i flew out of jfk airport in new york city and as soon as i went to check my bag in the man who was doing baggage checking was like where you going i said cartagena colombia he was like where's your um did you fill out the migration form i said yes he said pull up the email confirmation you cannot check your bag, you cannot get on a flight without email confirmation so i pulled it up on my phone showed it to him i checked my bag everything was all good and when you're leaving the country, you also have to fill out the migration form as well. You gotta make sure that the US Embassy knows. Even though I feel like with our passport, wasn't that the whole point of having the passport so that the US Embassy will know when we're going in and out? But anywho, make sure you fill out that migration form, okay? Number two, I heard that taxis could be tricky in Cartagena. Like, they try to overcharge you if you are a foreigner, especially from the U.S. They try to get you, okay? So, there is a QR code at the airport where you scan it with your phone. So, the QR code will give you a list of taxi ride prices based on different locations that you would travel to and from. So, that would be something great uh, for you to... No, before you get in a taxi, scan the QR code at the airport, ask someone, hey, where's the taxi cab QR code? That is exactly what I did. I made sure I scanned it. However, before I got to Cartagena, I booked a car service through a website called Get Your Guide. It was called ATC Transportation. And when I got to the airport, like my ride was already paid for. They picked me up. They took me to my hotel. And so someone basically reached out to me on WhatsApp and was like, hey, when do you expect to arrive? I gave them my flight details when I was going to be leaving JFK, when I was going to be arriving. And so when your plan lands, give it an hour before you ask your ride to show up, okay? Because you still have to go through customs. You still have to collect your bags anytime after i left the airport and i needed a ride somewhere i would just contact this company through whatsapp and they would say where do you need to go they would tell me how much it was and they were really like good with pricing and so that's how i got around number three dress low key now i was told by a colombian that is from Cartagena before i even came here to dress low key and there's this saying called no dar papaya or basically don't give papaya which also means like don't give somebody a reason to want to rob you the colombians could tell that i was a foreigner just by the way that i was dressed anyway but just don't bring attention to yourself don't be out here flashing money don't do any of that be low-key okay don't have a camera out vlogging like you are in la because it can get snatched number four when i checked into my hotel even when I booked my taxi, I had a man's name on my reservation. 
I use my son, you can use your brother, you can use your father. If you are solo traveling as a woman, I highly suggest put a man on your reservation. So when I got to the taxi, they went, oh, where's the other person? I said, you know, oh, they flew in a little later. They'll be here to meet me later. Cause you just never know, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm not trying to scare you. And if I had a daughter that was solo traveling, I would definitely be giving her these tips. And when I got to the hotel, the same, oh yeah, he, he's flying in later. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Number five, never let strangers know which hotel you're staying at. I know this is common sense, but sometimes we meet people and it's like, hey, which hotel are you staying at? And it's like, hey, I'm staying at the Oz Hotel. And it's like, it's friendly. You don't think people are that shit crazy, but you just never know. And so, I remember meeting up with a group of girls and guys and they're like, hey, which hostel are you staying at? They're sharing which hostel, which hostel are you staying at? And I'm just like, listen, I told them I was staying at the Intercontinental Hotel. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. And also, like, people were asking me, oh, how long are you staying? When are you leaving? Oh, I'm going to, uh, I told somebody I was going to Medellin afterwards. I wasn't. I was going home. But I was not going to give them the exact date that I was leaving. Like, you just never know. And when you are solo traveling, especially as a woman, you just got to be smart. You got to be smart. You got to be safe. So if you are a female solo traveler, I definitely travel with my handy. Whoop. I definitely travel with my handy can of pepper spray. However, I pack this in my check of luggage because I don't think you can take this through TSA. And so once I got off the plane, I just took this out of my luggage and put it into my purse. Also, I got this little thingamajig from Amazon. It's like a door stopper for your hotel room. This is like 10 bucks. Like put this in your door and you're able to like lock it behind you so nobody could just bust your door open. So definitely got one of these number six so if you're solo traveling i know a lot of people worry about solo traveling oh i'm going to be bored what am i going to do book tours or excursions that is how you meet other solo travelers and it's so crazy you leave the u.s and all you're going to do is run into a bunch of people from the u.s when you are solo traveling anyway <laughs> so i met a group of people on a walking tour and we decided hey let's hang out so we went and grabbed some drinks we had mojitos it was exciting and like we created like a cartagena like um travel group on whatsapp so if we wanted to meet up again we could just meet up again you know what i'm saying so that's how you meet people which i did post a vlog um sharing all the things that i did in Cartagena, colombia i will link it to this video in case you want to go and check it out and so if you're worried about being bored i would suggest highly suggest booking some tours some excursions or whatever it is so you can meet other people and that's what i did and i was i never felt lonely and but then again, I am an introvert and I did grow up an only child. So let's put that out there, <laughs> okay? Get your guide. You can book like a lot of tours and excursions. Also trip advisor, I recommend. I use both of them. And then Airbnb if you need like a photographer or someone to take your photos for you. Those are some options too. Also number seven, when you change your money out for Colombian pesos, try to get the smallest amount of denominations of bills because when it's time to pay for anything, especially with street vendors, you can give them exact change. And if you have to take a taxi, you can give that taxi exact change. So just avoid being taken advantage of and we don't want to be arguing with other people in their country and you're a foreigner, especially taxi drivers. They're bringing you back to your hotel. They know where you're staying. Not saying that anything could, would happen to you, but just to be on the safer side, try to get the smallest denominations of Colombian pesos that you can. Fives, tens, twenties, two dollar twos or whatever you call it. Okay. Number eight, be careful at the beach. I went to the beach. I got ran off the beach in about 15 minutes. So I just went on the beach to walk around. And as you're walking on the beach, there's people walking up to you. Hey, hey, we have food over here. You want to get drenched? You want to get a massage? You want to... Hmm. every five steps that I walked someone was trying to sell me something okay so I walk on the beach this lady comes up to me she starts talking to me it started off friendly then she starts rubbing this lotion on me right she had like this I look down she has this makeshift like a water bottle like a bigger water bottle or like this lotion and cream I don't know what it is she has in this bottle she starts rubbing it on my skin and talking about i need a massage i'm like lady what are you doing like nobody gave you permission to touch me like 
and I'm looking at the bottle wondering what it is that she's putting on me and then she's like oh it's sunscreen I'm wearing a Ralph Lauren um polo shirt that I paid full price for it mind you I, you know I'm about to get oil all over my shirt all over my skirt I get up finally I got my skirt got all of this mess on it like it was just a hot mess so I get up and I'm telling her like listen I have to go like what are you doing and she's gonna tell me I owe her a hundred thousand Colombian pesos because she gave me a massage that's about 25 US dollars I turned to her and I looked her dead in the face and said do you want me to give you 100,000 Colombian pesos absolutely not and I think once I got really serious and I looked at her she just was like taking a bag and it was like another guy with her and he was like listen I'm not asking you for money or whatever and like he just walked away $25,000 25 for a little arm I never asked you to touch me are you crazy and I know she was going to ask me for money and so I was prepared to give her like 10,000 Colombian pesos which is like maybe $2.50 or like I feel like it's $2.50 yeah but you wanted me to give you 25 us dollars you tried that you tried it you tried it and that after that incident i never went back to the beach again because i know i'm from the u.s and yes i have 25 dollars i definitely do but i'm not giving it to you it's not for you so if you plan to go to the beach be prepared for people to come up to you start talking to you their friendly conversation is going to turn into somebody trying to charge you for something. I say all that to say, be careful at the beach. That ruined my experience at the beach. And I need somebody to pass the information to people in Cartagena. When we go to the, when we go on vacation, we want to relax. When we go to the beach, we want to relax. So I did research that the average salary for a black person in Cartagena, Colombia is 500 USD. So. I believe my tour guide told me that black people along the Caribbean coast of Colombia are called costeños, costeños, I hope I'm saying that right, and they get paid lower salaries, they are discriminated against, they are not allowed into certain types of fancy restaurant establishments, clubs, and I'm black of course but I'm a foreigner so I do have access to those spaces, I guess that would be called uh, American privilege but that's strange to say out loud but yeah and so I understand that the salaries are lesser and they know that if you've traveled to Colombia Cartagena especially that you obviously have money because my flight was what $500 I had a direct flight from JFK to Cartagena so as soon as they hear that US accent they're going to try to get get at you okay they're going to try to get you so be careful on the beach, okay? My hotel was literally right up the street from the beach. Like, I could literally look off the rooftop of my hotel and just see the beach. It took me, like, two minutes to walk over to the beach, you know? But be careful on the beach. Number nine, when you are traveling, embrace the culture. Enjoy it as much as you can. And keep your opinions about other people's culture to yourself. You Don't, don't be one of those Americans, okay? Don't be one of those. I remember when I went to Mexico and I got into the taxi um, ride from the airport to my hotel. The taxi driver was asking me why did I come to Mexico? What brought me there? And I was like, hey, I've always wanted to travel to Mexico. I always heard good things about it. I have friends who travel here, you know, and I was going to Puerto Vallarta and I'm telling him I want to go to Mexico City. I want to go to Los Cabos, like Cozumel. Like I want to go to other places in Mexico to loom because I hear it's so beautiful he starts telling me about how he had another client she was also black from the US and she was talking about how she was scared of the cartels I'm in the backseat like clutching my pearls and what am I embarrassed because huh and like sir why are you telling me this I just told you I was excited to be in Mexico and you telling me about what somebody else said so I tell him listen I'm from the U.S. and I probably have a higher chance of being human trafficked in the U.S. than I do in, in Mexico you know I've had issues in the U.S. where shoot I'm lucky to be alive I got six more lives left out of my nine like sir I don't care about what a lady told you take me to my hotel I'm just trying to enjoy the trip so don't be one of those Americans going to other countries 
acting like you know what i'm saying your country is just the best and you just have so much to say that is just trifling now overall did i feel safe in cartagena i personally felt safe in cartagena i'm just going to speak from my personal experience maybe your experience has had been different in cartagena but i'm going to give you my personal experience i feel like if you're someone who went to paris and you hated it don't come to cartagena okay do not come do not come <laughs> I feel like in certain parts of Cartagena, um, off the touristy spots, Cartagena could be a little rough. Now, I had to get my hair done when I went there, and they dropped me off in an area where I was just like, whoo, you know? <laughs> and that's no shade to Cartagena. Like, I grew up in the inner city in the 90s, and it was, it, whoo, it was the same, it was the same vibe, okay? So... I feel like as someone who comes from the Northeast, like I was able to navigate in that space and not be totally freaked out and scared for my life or clutching pearls. You get what I'm saying? I do feel like you should dress modestly. You should dress down. Um, if you are going to wear your name brand stuff, if you are that girl, you are bougie, keep it understated. You know, if you want to wear your Oran, uh, Hermes, slide, sandals do that i was wearing golden goose sneakers the whole time I, and you know golden goose sneakers just looks like some you're wearing really old sneakers so i'm not sure if they even knew that they were designer you know um i was literally walking around with somebody's whole salary on my feet which is wild and it's crazy when i think about it but just be low-key i always had like a crossbody purse when i travel if you travel and you're a woman even a man i suggest you wear like tote bags I suggest tote bags. I did wear like a crossbody leather purses a couple of days, but this way you could just have it here. You know what I'm saying? And when you need to pay for something, it's easy to just go into your purse and just like look for the money that you need and pull it out. Like don't pull out the money and then be flipping through the money and then hand it. So I felt this was a great way when I was like seeing street vendors. I wanted to buy a water. I could just go in here and just like literally go pick out my money and give it to them like that and you know it's just a low-key way to travel so if i have my camera in some days i'll put it in here my water this is just a safer way for me to travel There's any tote bag i have one that i got from paris that i was using as well i feel like because i'm black and a lot of the colombians that i ran into were black and so because i look like them and they constantly kept coming up to me saying hey you like you're from here but you're dressed like an american i feel like there is this unspoken rule that they're not necessarily going to get at me <laughs> A black woman but if you are a black man and you are from the u.s i feel like all bets are off if you are a, uh, even a white man you know all bets are off and i only say that because i heard three men at the airport talking about how they got robbed and one man even said how he got not only did he get robbed but he also got drugged do you get what i'm saying and i just feel like if you are a woman and you're a solo traveling just be careful if you're going out Two drinks is the maximum that you should be having. You do not need to be getting into anybody's taxi in a foreign country, pissy drunk, trying to get back to your hotel because you want to have all your faculties. There are people at home, your mother, your sisters, your aunts, if you have children that are waiting for you to return back home. Use your brain, okay? <laughs> Use your brain. I know this is common sense, but I just want to put that out there you're in a foreign country you want to get back to your hotel safe you want to make it home back to whatever country you are coming from even when you're at your hotel like my hotel we had like a rooftop we had like a outdoor um lounge area don't be at your hotel getting drunk just in the lobby or in the rooftop because obviously i'm at the hotel people are coming up to me to talk to me introducing themselves people see you having too many drinks people watch you there are people who will be watching you once you start getting a little too tipsy, you start letting your guard down, you stop really watching and looking out for yourself. And it's easy for someone to come up to you, hey, where you're from? And then you start spilling your tea. Oh, I stay at this hotel. I'm in room 405. And next thing you know, you slip something. You wake up. You don't know where you are. You're naked. Your stuff is gone. Like, I'm just, you in Cartagena. You're in a country where you definitely have more money than the people that are there you're definitely earning more money than the people are there be smart use your head okay and when i was listening to these three guys at the airport um they were all black one was like appeared to be afro latino he was speaking spanish but you know that's that and two men were basically like that they felt like the taxi driver set them up and basically 
they were just driving and then somebody walked up to the car and basically was like this is a robbery give me your stuff type of situation and then the one guy was with a girl he wasn't with any women when he was at the airport he was by himself he was like oh i think that the girl set me up i think she has something to do with it were you passport growing were you passports growing in Cartagena? okay so he's like, I think that girl set me up. I think she set me up. That's why I tell you, be careful in taxis. And he was like, oh, the taxi driver still had his phone or whatever. And the girl still had her phone. But he, um, they took his watch and his money or whatever he had. And then he also was saying how he went out to a club. I can't remember which one he said. Like I said, I was ear hustling. And he, on his second drink, he started to feel like woozy. And he woke up in his Airbnb and he don't remember what happened prior to that so be careful another man was saying that he was walking down the street and somebody just snatched his chain off his neck and so this is why i say be careful and i noticed that two of the men had like designer book bags one had like a louis vuitton one one had a gucci one or whatever and this is why i say be low key that this is why i say be careful in cartagena it could be a good old good time i had a great time however you have to just be smart you guys so if you guys work remote and you plan to be out of the country make sure that you buy a vpn so there's like two people out here working from home and so i asked one of the girls like um did you buy a vpn and she said yeah and she said it definitely works so when i got here i noticed that like i was getting a lot of emails um they were coming down like the little tab on my phone so i went to check just to see what was happening and I noticed I was logged out of my company's email. And when I tried to log back in, I got a message basically saying that my emails are basically blocked while I'm out of the country. Which is strange because when I was in Paris, I could definitely log into my emails. However, I did take PTO, so I'm not expected to be returning any emails until March 1st, as per my um, automatic email reply. <laughs> but just FYI, if you plan to come to South America or the Caribbean, Make sure you purchase yourself a VPN if you plan on working remote. If you go to Colombia, have fun and yeah, enjoy it. And that is all.